Okay, just making sure my microphone is working. Here we go. Uh, this is day two of solving equations, and more specifically, solving quadratic equations. Why do we call them quadratic equations? Because we have a variable that is being squared. So whenever it's being squared, it's called quadratic, meaning it's non-linear. It's going to produce a parabola. And we will be going over how to graph those parabolas later on. The, uh, in probably the beginning of third trimester. So I'm excited for that. All right, so solve each equation by factoring. All right, so before, remember our objective was to get it to be the product of two binomials or two numbers that equals zero. And we like that, that's extremely important for us. And it's important for us because we're gonna use the zero property. That helps us tremendously. So. How do we turn this into a product? By factoring. So we go through those same things. We look, is there a greatest common factor amongst the three terms? No. Is it the difference of squares? No, it doesn't have two terms. Is it a binomial square? Well, it does have three terms, but the second sign is negative. So we can't, that is not a binomial square. So we're gonna look at a times c. So a is one, c is negative two. Factors of two are one and two. Signs are different. And bigger is positive. So bigger number is positive, smaller is negative. That gives me one, that equals my middle. So I'm gonna turn this into And I'm going to still factor by grouping. I'm going to factor out an x. I'm going to factor out a positive 2. And I get x minus 1, x plus 2 equals 0. Now we have the product of two numbers that equals 0. So I'm going to separate each one and set it equal to zero because I know one of those boxes, remember these are, I sort of equated that to boxes, right, mystery boxes. And we said, right, if we have these two boxes, one of these has to be equal to zero. So if this is equal to zero, then we look at what's underneath it, okay? What is underneath that box is equal to zero. Whatever is in that box has to equal zero. So x minus one, okay? So what value for x would make that box equal to one? We can just solve for the variable in that situation. So when x equals one, that box equals zero. So what does that box have to be or what does the variable x have to be in order to make that box equal to zero? So we set it equal to zero, solve for the variable, and I get my two, two solutions. Negative two and one. So there we have it. That is going to be the brunt of algebra right there. So those are my two values that will solve that equation. Again, we start with GCF. Is there a greatest common factor? Nope. Is it the difference of squares? Nope. Is it a binomial square? Nope, 21 is not a perfect square. So I'm gonna do A times C. A is one, C is 21. One and 21, two no, three and seven, four, five, six, my signs are the same, and they're both positive. 22, 10 is equal to 10. So a squared plus 3a plus 7a, hello, plus 21 equals 0. Factor by grouping, we're going to take out an a. We're going to take out a 7, 
hopefully this is getting faster for you and you're seeing how these how these come together set that equal to zero set this binomial equal to zero and solve for the variable so when a is negative three this box is equal to zero that would make it equal to zero and when a equals negative seven this box would be equal to zero and so my solutions remember they have to be in numeric order are negative seven and negative three i like this one this one's a pretty good one so we look at gcf is there a greatest common factor yeah there's no third term here, so there's only two terms, so there is a greatest common factor. They both have n, so we can factor that out. And now that becomes that. Now we're still going to look at this binomial. Is it the difference of squares? No, it's not subtraction. Is it a binomial square? No, doesn't have three terms. Can we do a times c? No, doesn't have three terms. Is it factor by grouping? Nope, doesn't have four terms. So I can't factor that anymore. So I still set it equal to zero. And now notice we have a product of two numbers or two quantities that equal zero. So we're still going to set each one equal to zero. That's already set equal to zero. That, or that variable is isolated. And now we're going to isolate this. So we get negative 3 and 0. Those are the two numbers when plugged back into here that would make that equation true. It's a really good problem right there. So again, is there a greatest common factor? Nope. No number goes into both of those. Is it the difference of squares? Two terms. Subtraction. And both perfect squares. Yes, yes, and yes. So we know this is the difference of squares. Difference of squares produce conjugates. You should have this on a note card that you can refer to with an example so you know what that's going to look like. So they produce conjugates. You take the square root of the first to get the firsts. You take the square root of the last to get the lasts. And we know that the signs are going to change or uh, going to be different. So we're going to set each one equal to zero. We're going to add three. We're going to subtract three. And here's two ways of writing this solution. I love this. So you will see in high school, since the solutions are positive 3 and negative 3, we use this plus or minus sign. You'll see it on your calculators right here. Plus or minus. That's not necessarily what it is, but uh, at least it infers that. So what that's inferring is negative 3 and positive 3. And the way you can write that is using this sign plus or minus 3. You'll see it later on in the quadratic equation, which is another good formula that you will need to know. All right, let's move on to five. Greatest common factor? Nope. Does go into three and 12, but it doesn't go into 13. Difference of squares? No, it's not two terms. Binomial square? No, 12 is not a perfect square. A times C, okay? So A is three, C is 12. 36, factors of 36, it's going to be a couple of them. Signs are the same, and both are positive. Thirty-seven, twenty, fifteen, thirteen, twelve. This is my middle, so we get 3m squared plus 4m plus 9m 
plus 12 equals 0. Let's factor out an m. We get 3m plus 4. Let's factor out a 3. We get 3m plus 4. And that'll give me 3m plus 4 times the quantity m plus 3 equals 0. We have the product of two numbers that equal 0. We're going to set each equal to 0. Because one of those has to be 0. And what variable, what value for the variable makes that quantity 0? So we're going to get rid of things being added and subtracted first. Then divide. And we get m equals negative 4 thirds. We'll leave it as an improper fraction because there's nothing improper about an improper fraction. And remember, we have to put them in numerical order. I should know that negative 3 is less than negative 4 thirds. Ooh, here we go again. I like this. GCF. There is a GCF. There is a P. So that becomes 5P plus 7 equals 0. Not the difference of squares, not binomial square. Remember, I'm testing this, seeing if that can still be factored any further. Not A times C, and not factor by grouping. So that is all factorable. I'm going to set each one equal to 0. So that's already set equal to 0. Let's subtract 7. Divide by 5, and we get that. So my solutions are negative 7 fifths and 0. Number 7, no greatest common factor. Um, not the difference of squares. Not a binomial square. So let's do a times c, 3, and negative 12 this time to give me negative 36. Uh, we get 1 and 36, 2 and 18, 3 and 12, 4 and 9, 6 and 6. Signs are different, and the bigger is positive. Bigger of the two numbers, Mr. Max, 6 and 6 aren't bigger. I know. But one of them is going to be positive, one's going to be negative. So that gives me 35, 16, 9, 5, and 0. 16 is my middle. So we get 3x squared minus 2x plus 18x minus 12 equals 0. Factor out an x, we get 3x minus 2. Factor out a 6, and we get 3x minus 2 equals 0. 3x minus 2, x plus 6. Set each one equal to 0. And we're going to add 2. We're going to divide by 3. We're going to subtract 6, and we get negative 6, positive 2 thirds. Make sure I did my signs correctly, and that is good. Number 8, no common factor, not difference of squares, not a binomial square. was hoping that we'd do a binomial square, so a times c. We're getting pretty good at this. 18, 1, 18, 2, and 9, 3, and 6. Signs are the same, and both are negative. All right, we, it's our first negative there. Negative 19, negative 11, negative 9. Ooh, I like this. 3n squared minus n minus 18n plus 6 equals 0. Let's group them. 
we're going to factor out an n. We get 3n minus 1. Ooh, that's interesting. Uh, we're going to factor out a negative 6. First term is negative, so we have to factor out a negative. Don't forget about that. And that gives me 3n minus 1, n minus 6 equals 0. Let's set each one equal to 0. 3n minus 1 equals 0, and n minus 6 equals 0. We're going to add 1 to both sides. Divide by 3. We're going to add 6. And I get my two solutions. Numerical order, one third is smaller than six. Number nine. All right. So greatest common factor, yes. There's only two terms. We can take out a three R and you get R minus one. It is not the difference of squares. This is not the difference of squares. It's not a binomial square. It's not a times c, because it's not three terms, and it's not factored by grouping, because it's not four terms. So that is factored, and the product equals zero. So I'm gonna set each one equal to the value of zero. What value, would, what value for r would make it equal to zero? What value for r would make that quantity equal to zero, because we know one of those two quantities must be equal to zero because the product of these two things is equal to zero. So either this equals zero or this. So we want to find out what value for R would make that group equal to zero. So we divide by three and we get R equals zero. Zero divided by three is zero. We're going to add one and we get R equals one. So my two solutions, the two values, when plugged into this starting equation, that would create a zero, that would make it equal to the left side, equal to zero, would be zero and one. Ooh, ooh I like this, thank you. Greatest common factor, yes, there is a greatest common factor between three, 15, and 18, that's technically a negative 15. There's a three. So we're going to factor this out first, and now we go through. We're testing this. Is it the difference of squares? No, it doesn't have two terms. Is it a binomial square? No, 6 isn't a perfect square. Can we do a times c? Yes, there's three terms. a is 1, c is 6. Factors of 6 are 1 and 6, 2 and 3. Signs are the same. Both are negative, negative 7, negative 5. This is equal to my middle. So I'm going to turn that into x squared minus 2x minus 3x plus 6 equals 0. We're going to factor by grouping. We're going to factor out an x. You get x minus 2. We're going to factor out a negative 3 to get x minus 2, and my answers, well, my next line will be 3 times, that's outside, so it still stays out there. x minus 2 is what they have in common. If we take that away, you get x minus 3 equals 0. This time we have three numbers when multiplied equals 0. So we set each one equal to 0. Well, 3 doesn't equal 0, so we can push that away. That's not a possibility, and there isn't a variable in that statement anyway. Remember, we're looking for the variables that make 0. So we get those two, and my solutions are 2 and 3. So very cool problem. That's a good one. That's pretty much the creme de la creme. Ooh, this is good. There's a greatest common factor, yep, of four. We get m squared plus 2m plus one equals zero. It's not the difference of squares. Binomial square, we haven't gone through what the criteria of binomial square. Three terms, 
This has three terms. Second sign positive. This second sign is positive. First and third are perfect squares. Yes, m squared is a perfect square. One is a perfect square. Does my middle equal two times the square root of the first times the square root of the last? Two square root of the first is m. Square root of the last is one. 2m. Does my middle equal 2m? Yes, it does. So that means this is a binomial square. What does binomial squares create? Well, it creates a binomial that is being squared. How do we get my first? Take the square root of the first, take the square root of the last, and take the sine of the first. Equals zero. So when we get this, we have to remember through our homework, what does this mean? Well, Remember, this is a binomial square, so it just means that we have two of these. And we have three things multiplying equal zero, so we set each one equal to zero. Well, four doesn't equal zero. Four is a constant. There's no variable to solve for. We can solve for the variable here, though and we get negative one for both of them. So we just write it once and our solution is just negative one. That's a really good problem right there. Let's do number 12. Greatest common factor, yes, there's a two in there. We get x squared minus four equals zero. Is it the difference of squares? Yes, it is. So this becomes And then we set equal, each one equal to zero. Two can equal zero. We're gonna add two. X equals two. We're gonna subtract two. X equals negative two. So my solution is going to be written as plus or minus two. Why? Because we have positive two and negative two as our solution. All right, those are the answers. Hope for this. Hopefully you did well in this section. And uh, I look forward to hearing any questions that you might have.